a six by six canvas. It's fairly small, you can see. And what I've done is just earlier today painted it with one coat of metallic white paint, which comes out kind of like a pearl. You can see it's kind of pearly. So we're gonna um, use this. So it's already pre-painted, pearl, and dry. So here is my part of my little globe that I was using to make something out of for this piece. And what I've created is a cute heart. Oh my goodness, let me turn it upside down. Give me a sec so y'all can see what I'm doing. There we go. So what I'm gonna make is a cute little heart out of my glass pieces that I got from this bulb. So I'm just gonna real quick kind of give you a once over of how I made that happen. So what I did first was I broke the globe um, a couple of days ago, I just whacked it with a hammer, literally, because it's pretty thick. I don't know if you can see, but it is pretty thick glass. So I really needed to give it a nice whack. And then I took the largest piece, which was actually this one, and I started breaking off smaller pieces. So I broke off two pieces, and they were kind of irregular shaped. So then all I had to do, and I'm gonna demo kind of on here. So when you're cutting glass from something that is round, circular, concave, you wanna cut from the inside, not the outside, okay? So you don't wanna cut the outside of the round. You wanna cut on the inside where you can follow that curve with your knife. So here's all I did. I cut, whacked out a couple of pieces, and then I just took my cutter and then, and there, this one's kind of cracked right here, so I'm just gonna follow the crack. And I just scored a line with my scoring tool. And then I'm gonna use my breaking pliers and just break that piece. And so it breaks into close to the shape that I needed, okay? So I was trying to make these oval shapes so I can make a heart, all right? So once I got the bigger shape cut, I can just take my wheeled nippers, which is what these are, and then I can just nip around and nip off some pieces to shape the curve of my heart. Make sense? Yes, I'm not Kelly, feeling much better, but I do feel like a human being. And I did shower, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, kind of always feel a little bit better when you're clean. So basically, I just busted up my globe and I cut myself out a large piece using my scoring tool. And then I nipped the shape I wanted with my wheeled nippers, which are these. Okay, these cut little bitty bits, and then I formed myself a cute little glass heart. So it's really just two oval shapes that are pointed on the end so that I can overlap them. So here's what we're gonna do. I, I put these on here and I think it's beautiful, but I still think it's kind of missing something. So we are going to add some words down at the bottom, okay? So I beat myself up for an hour about what words we were gonna add and I finally came up with just putting you and me on here, okay? Yeah, I do sound a little better, but it, I'm sure by the end of this live, I will sound like a crazy person. <coughs> so I'm gonna just uh, transfer you and me and then we'll put our heart on and pour resin. And then this will be really, really, really cute. It'll be a really cute gift for somebody. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna show you how, oh, am I flipped again? Let me see. Is that better? Can you see that? Yeah, because I'm holding, yeah, okay. I think I fixed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can see, now you can see all my, hang on. Let me try something real quick. I wanna point it down a little further. There. Now you can't see my big old gut belly hanging over. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I'm gonna show you real quick how to transfer. This is kind of, of my little cheat that uh, I use to transfer words because I am not, I do not have uh, the ability to just freehand this stuff. Um, I, I have arthritis in my hands, so I really struggle with making uh, handwriting look really pretty. So what I like to do is just print out a font I like, and you can see that I just printed out a couple of things on paper in the size that I felt like I needed, and then I just kind of sat around and looked, thought about it and, and decided um, that, um, oh, <laughs> Dawn, not everybody has a miserable love like love life like you and me, baby. Okay, so I'm going to show you real quick, quick and easy, how to use tracing carbon paper. And this you can find in Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby, over in the art section. It's just like a, like the old carbon paper that we use to transfer from here to there. I'm fading in and out. I'm probably moving around too much. Okay, so I am going to just slip my carbon paper under. Let me let me grab a piece of tape so I can keep those words straight. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tape my words where they'll be still. Hey, Michelle, thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Appreciate you coming and hanging out with us for a few minutes. We're gonna be doing some really good fun art. So stick with us. So I'm gonna use my tracing paper and I am just gonna slip it under my words and I'm gonna use this stylus. This is called a stylus and it looks like a pen, but there's no ink. It just has a sharp little round point on the end so that you can trace lines in, from your paper onto your canvas. Now you don't really have to use one of these. You could just use a, a ballpoint pen if you don't have one like this. Thank you for sprinkling, Janie. If you don't have a stylus, don't worry. There are only a couple of bucks at Hobby Lobby and you know you can always use that coupon. But um, you don't have to, I'm gonna tear this, it's bugging me already. It's hanging down in my lap. You do not have to have a stylus to do this. Just use an ink pen. So all I'm gonna do now is trace over the words you and me, and then I'll show you my little cheats. And I'll try to go fairly fast because I know we don't wanna be here all night. So I'm tracing over the letter, and I'm tracing both sides of the fat part. And I'll show you what I mean by that once I get it traced. I'm not just tracing Y-O-U. I'm doing all the dimension of the words. I had to stop talking or I was gonna mess up. Now when you're doing this, try not to press too hard on this black paper. Uh, you know, rub your hand hard across it because it will leave a little bit of black imprint on your canvas if you're not super careful. So be really gentle with that. Don't press too hard there. So I've got a very gentle touch here. Almost done. And then I'll show you. This is my cheat because I have shaky hands and arthritis. I got arthritis in my everything, my hips, my knees. But uh, this helps me be able to add words to things without making a mess. So pull that out. And now what we have left is see how it's dimensional. You can tell that um, the bottom parts of some of the letters are fatter. So we are gonna paint that in. We're gonna make it look really pretty. If you do get some black on the canvas, just let this sit for a few minutes. And what I normally do is just take a paintbrush like that is kind of has stiff bristles, get it wet, and then kind of just scrub around and get that off. But if you're really gentle, and, and I didn't get any black on mine, but you can absolutely just get a little bit of water and uh, kind of erase it with water. 
So I'm going to put this away. And then we are going to... You have two options for this. You can use a marker, an archive a black marker to fill in all your words. And I'm going to do the, the word Y or the letter Y to show you how you can do that. And all I'm going to do is follow the lines that I traced. So actually, I'm going to do the ampersand that's in the middle. Uh, it'll just be easier for me right now. So I'm just going to follow right over my traced line. And you see I already got too wiggly because my hands are shaky. This is why a lot of the time I like to just paint it. For some reason, that works better for me, especially on a canvas. So you can just color it in, trace around the edges, color it in with your marker. Make sure it's archival quality or the resin will make it run. Do not use a Sharpie. So there would be my ampersand. Okay, so, but what we're gonna do for the rest, cause it'll go a little bit faster for me and I won't be so shaky, is use black paint. Hello, late. <laughs> How are you, late? So I'm gonna just put, this is just uh, black. Anita's black, just craft store black paint. I'm still using my icky plate that I've been using all week. And you don't need much, and but you do need to water it down some. So let me get, these brushes are filthy. I've been, uh, they've been sitting in here for a hot minute. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of water. It's red from last night. And mix up my black because what I want is more of an ink-like consistency, okay? It's gonna flow nicer if it's not so thick. So we'll try that. Now what I need is a small liner brush. So this, I can't find the camera. <laughs> That's what this is, is a small liner brush and it makes it really easy to do the script, okay? So I'm just gonna dip into my black, saturate that brush really well. And then I'm gonna, oh, this brush sucks, hang on. Do you see why it sucks? Let me show you on a piece of paper. Do you see how the hair, the brush hairs are split? And they're not forming, they're not all gathered together and forming a nice little brush. Thank you for the sprinkles. That is gonna make a mess on my canvas and then I'm gonna have a cow not gonna be pleased. So let me see, all my liner brushes look like garbage. Hang on, give me one sec. I think I got new ones. Yes. Okay, new brush. New one. So I'm gonna use this one because it's nicer and it doesn't, uh, the bristles aren't all broken out. So I'm gonna saturate my brush, and then we're just gonna start filling in the words. And I'm gonna show you another little trick that works for me. When I'm working on the edge of a canvas, then it's hard, it's hard for me to do it like this because my hand is off the edge. So I like to take an, another canvas and use it to prop my hand on so that it's more comfortable for me. So if this is uncomfortable, just trying to do it like this, try it this way and see if that works for you. So I am going to, jet, the glare is terrible, so I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit for my own sanity and I am just going to color in, basically I'm coloring in the words where I traced them earlier. So I'm just following my trace lines. I might have got a little too much water, so let me do this. A little thin. Yeah, this works really well for me. And I'm just going to trace around Where I, where I trace those lines. <clears throat> I 
And this is a little bit easier for me than the pen. For, I'm just more comfortable doing it this way. But whatever works for you is perfectly fine. Uh, don't, you know, don't think you're doing it wrong. You just do it your way. Your way is the right way. You have to do what works for you. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm, I'm probably gonna stop talking a little bit because this will go faster if I'm not yakking. And that way we don't have to be here all night. So I'm just gonna keep. And the lighter touch you have, the skinnier your line. And the more pressure, the thicker your line will be, okay? So there's my Y. And O. And always keep your brush loaded, okay? You don't wanna run out of paint, so keep it loaded constantly. Then, our little U. Got quiet in here. So I'm gonna just go over my ampersand a little bit so that it's consistent color-wise because the marker does make a little bit of a different look. So I'm just gonna trace over that a little bit. The girls downstairs are having a party, I think. I'm gonna have to go down there and whop them. They just think they got beat up yesterday. So now we're gonna start on the word me. So it's really skinny out here on the tail and then kind of fat on this part. Ooh. So guys, while I'm finishing this up and I should probably not be talking about I wanna uh, remind you guys that Jennifer Allwood, her creator's roadmap is open. I know some of you have already joined, uh, but she is literally, she was my business coach for a very long time. And she is why this page and my art business is successful. Um, and I took her course a couple of years ago and it definitely made a difference. It took my page from what it was, 500 Facebook followers um, a couple years ago to almost 30,000 today because I just did the things she told me. So if anybody is on the fence or has any questions or wants to talk to me about um, Creator's Roadmap and what I think about it, feel free to send me a DM. I will talk to you all day about the benefits and whether I think it would be beneficial for you. And the answer to that is yes. So if you're struggling, basically if you're struggling with social media, knowing what to do to advertise or build your business in the social media realm, if you're looking for ways to make money with affiliate income and being an influencer and that sort of thing, um, she is the person whose course you need to take because it cha literally changed my life. I went from being a hobby artist to actually making a living as an artist. So now, I kind of messed that E up, but we're gonna leave it be for now. Hang on. I'm gonna fatten up that center a little. Okay, you and me. Woohoo! Yes, direct message. <laughs> PM, Facebook message, send me an email, call me, whatever you want to do. If you have questions about her course, if you are uh, an entrepreneur, a business, uh, looking for ways to make your business grow, 
and are interested in um, potentially talking to me about that, just send me a message. I'm happy to tell you. And I tell you right now, there's a lot of people on this page right now who know me and have known me most of my life. And I will never, ever, ever, ever tell you something that I didn't feel was 100% true. I'd never tell you to go take a course that was not a huge success for me. I would never lead you astray, but never, ever, never do that. I do not uh, promote people I don't believe in. Okay, so now we have our cute little heart that's going to go right here. I really jacked up that M-E, didn't I? I don't even care right now. How's that? <laughs> so, here's what's going to happen here. I'm not going to put this on yet. What I've done after I cut those pieces was take my, um, my stone and just went around the edge. Because you can see, if you can tell right here where I nipped it, there's kind of some sharper edges. I already did this, but I wanted to just kind of show you. I went around and took those edges down so it won't cut you. You can totally feel the difference because you don't want to cut yourself on this glass. So I'm trying to figure out, keep my head straight about how this is going on my piece. Oh, just like that. So what we're going to do now is just go ahead and mix resin because I'm going to mix resin and pour it onto my surface or just rub a little onto my surface. Then I'm gonna put this on and then we're gonna add more resin to the top. And the reason we're gonna do it that way is these are raised up off the canvas. They're kind of curved. So I wanna make sure I have lots of resin underneath that glass. So we're just gonna, since it's only two pieces, we're gonna hit that canvas first. We're gonna put our little art down, our little glass down, and then we'll resin over the top to make sure that is really secure. Kelly, look, it was a bit, one of those big glass globes. Yeah, it was gorgeous. I whacked, it was kinda um, not, it wasn't a good one. It was like warped and it didn't form right. So I whacked that sucker with a hammer. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is mix some resin. Now for this, we're not gonna mix much, okay? I'm gonna mix literally a half ounce of resin. So I'm gonna mix a quarter ounce of resin and a quarter ounce of hardener and then put it all in one cup, mix it together, and then we're gonna put it on our piece. So I've gotta find my quarter mark right there. And, oh, that's dirty. We don't want dirt in our resin. <laughs> and, right there. So I'm going to pour, I'm gonna put my gloves on first because that's how it rolls. You do not wanna work with resin without your gloves on because it's sticky and it's icky. It's yucky. So always protect your hands, always protect your skin. This stuff that I'm using is art resin and it's non-VOC, non-hazmat. It's probably the uh, tamest resin on the market, but it's still sticky. And you know, people who have skin allergies and are super sensitive to chemicals, it could still break you out. So be very careful anyway, even if you don't have allergies. So I have these huge jugs that I hate. I'm glad it's almost done. <laughs> so I am going to very quietly and gently pour a quarter ounce of resin into this cup with this monster jug of resin. I hate these big jugs. <gasps> and you have to do it really slow because it grows on you. It's kind of like molasses. You pour it a little bit and then next thing you know, it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and raised up past the point of no return. So yeah, I'm going to do that after I mix because um, I wanted to have a flat surface <laughs> instead of my table. Right? Am I making y'all cringe? Working on my art piece again. So one more little drop, I think. Whoa, that was too much. And look what I did. I just said I was working on my art piece and I got a blob of resin on my piece. So we'll have to make sure we get that covered really well. Y'all jinxed me, mine. Okay, so that was a quarter ounce. That actually ended up being perfect. And we'll do this one with the hardener. 
Never get them mixed up because if you pour the same, it's two parts, one part resin, one part hardener. Hardener. So if you get them mixed up and you pour resin in here and then you get your jugs mixed up and you pour resin in here, you are gonna have a nasty, nasty mess. And you're gonna be sad. You're gonna be a sad artist because that is never gonna uh, dry. It's never going to cure. It's always gonna be like you poured molasses on top of a piece of art. I got a little happy with that too. So let's see, I'm gonna try to go really slow. I don't do well with these big jugs. All right, I'm gonna stop and let it grow a second. I said stop. All right, I think I'm golden. I'm the golden child. I don't think Reem is here, so we, I've got a clock actually on the wall behind me, or in front of me, and behind me. I've got a clock up there, so we, I'm just gonna use that. So what I do at this point, oh yeah, that's a good idea. You could totally mark it so it's easier to see. I just don't like doing things the hard way, Brenda. <laughs> Oh, Jennifer, awesome. Okay, let me pour part A into the other cup, and then if you don't mind, uh, you can be our stopwatch tonight. One time when we were doing a piece of art, I don't know if any of you guys were here and remember this, I was telling my iPad, so I, I hollered across at my iPad, hey Siri. And everybody on my live who had Siri, their iPhones responded. Or not everybody, probably, but several people's iPhones responded to me hollering, hey Siri, over the internet. <laughs> so, that's pretty funny. Okay, so I've got as much as I can out of this. So now we're going to mix for three minutes. Whoever has a stopwatch ready, go right ahead. I'm going to start mixing, and then I'm going to tell you about mixing. Yes! There you go, Susan. I do that all the time when I'm by myself. Yes, and that is a good idea too, Sandra. I just go by my, by my tops. I know which top I do first. And then sometimes if I'm doing a lot of art, I will, do, uh, I will make sure one is further away from me than the other so that I know. So what I'm doing now is mixing this resin. And I'm, you notice I'm mixing it really slow. I'm not like whip, 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 whipping it to death because I want to incorporate as few air bubbles into this mix as I possibly can because air bubbles aren't fun. You're always going to have some bubbles, but the faster you mix and the colder your resin is, the more bubbles you're going to have. Yeah, go Alexa. So we're going to mix slow. We're going to scrape our sides all the way around. Scrape the bottom. Make sure all that stuff is nice and mixed in your little teeny tiny baby cup. <laughs> in your little baby cup. So... In three minutes seems like nothing. I'll tell you how I figured out uh, three minutes was a long time. Actually, five minutes. Five minutes seems like nothing, doesn't it? Five minutes seems like I could do anything for five minutes until you attempt to do a five-minute plank or until you attempt to mix resin ten times for three minutes a pop. Yeah, makes your arms tired. <laughs> Those are some great ideas, marking your tops. Absolutely. I've just been doing this so long, it's like, yay. I've been doing it so long, it's second nature to me, but don't think for a minute I hadn't had to question myself. I was uh, actually had some smaller bottles I was working out of, and I had poured one part, and then I got sidetracked. And uh, yes, I hear you, Sandra. I got sidetracked, and I came back, uh, to my resin table and I couldn't remember which one I had poured. But luckily, it was the first time I had opened those bottles and I was mixing like several ounces. So I was able to look at the bottle and tell which one I had poured out of. But sometimes you don't know. Sometimes if you're mixing a small amount, it would be hard to tell. So yeah, you need to keep up with that. <laughs> it's no fun if you get yourself confused. Because then you're like, you almost just want to pour out what you did into the trash. Because if you 
mix it and pour it, then you messed up a piece of art and wasted a ton of resin. So it's just annoying to do that. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna stop for one second and get a drink. My throat is killing me. Back to it, I only missed three seconds. <laughs> If Rima was here, she'd be fussing at me. Keep stirring. Keep stirring. Stop. Gotcha. Thank you, Jennifer, for your help. So now what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm ensuring that my paint is dry. So, yes, it is. The you and me is perfectly dry. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that resin, and I'm just going to use my hands and spread it around on the surface of my canvas. And I'm going to cover it all really nicely. Make sure it's all covered. And I see I have a little debris. So I bought some of those filters you can put in your air vents. So when the air or the heat is blowing, it won't blow debris. But guess who hasn't put them in the vents yet? Because, you know, it's always something, isn't it? But I do see I have a little something right there. We're gonna get that out. So now what I wanna do is add my glass, okay? Yes, it does grow. So I'm gonna add my glass, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of resin on the inside of my glass so that it's uh, glass all over it, or resin all over it, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm just dipping my finger in my resin, and I'm gonna smear it all over the top and the bottom and the sides, we do, but sometimes that don't even matter, does it? So I'm gonna just lay that there and we'll fix it where it needs to be when we're done. But I'm gonna go back into my resin again. I'm gonna put some right on the inside of that piece of glass. Make sure you get the edges really good too. We'll do the outside. Now I'm gonna stand up for a sec so I can make sure, whoops, throwing stuff. I can make sure my heart is where I want it to be. Okay, so it looks pretty centered. I've got about the same amount of space on one side as the other. My points are lined up, Spaced right, spaced right, points are touching. So now what I'm gonna do is take my stick and I'm gonna use the rest of this resin to just drizzle over the glass. And I'm gonna make sure I drizzle right over those edges so that it runs down that edge and makes, makes double, triple, quadruple sure that those edges are covered and not sharp. So, and this also helps the resin to pull around those places where your glass is touching your canvas so that it doesn't come up. And then right here where the glass is touching itself, glass touching glass. And I have, I still have a good bit of resin in here. Let me see if I can tell how much. I probably could have made half as much as I did I probably could have made a quarter ounce total instead of a half ounce uh, because I do still have probably a quarter ounce of resin in here. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, always have something prepared. Um, I don't have anything prepared, so I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep drizzling a little. We'll be super resined. Little more on the words. And now we are going to torch. I'm gonna dump this. We got lots of resin here, so we shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with this. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and throw it away. So I'm gonna take my gloves off and I do this and I show you this all the time, but when you're taking your gloves off, you wanna take them off inside out and away from your face so that you're not spattering because you used your hands 
to smear all that resin around. So you want to uh, make sure you don't spatter that into your face or all over your table. So we're gonna set that down. I'm gonna throw it in my little trashy here. So quiet, so quiet. Okay, so now only thing we have left to do Dana, this was one of those like, <clears throat> like you know at a glass blower how they'll have like round ball ornaments that are blown glass? That's what this was. But you can totally do this just using like a round vase or something that's somewhat round. Anything like go to Home Goods, go to the Goodwill, the Habitat, places like that where you can buy secondhand cheap glass or go to find clearance vases that are round and um, a bulldog. That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I love that. You got some good eyes, Regetta. Okay, so I'm gonna torch. So as usual, I'm gonna talk to you about torching because you don't have to use this great big torch that I'm using. You can use a little kitchen torch, like one of those that the cooks use for creme brulee, or you can use a heat gun. But the goal is to just barely move over your art piece, never let the flame touch your canvas, and never stop and try to heat up one area at a time, okay? Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, be done. Also, I always tell you, never touch that. It's hot as crap, it will burn you up. Is this not cute? I'm trying to see the bulldog, I may have to step away. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, that is hilarious. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna pick this up. I've never did put a block under it, but I'm gonna do that now. We didn't get anything going off the sides anyway, so it's okay. But look how cute this turned out. I love it. And this was just a very, popping bubbles is fun, Sandra. This was a very small amount of glass vase or vase glass. Or, you know, if you have somebody in your area who's a glass blower and they're always doing these little ornaments, you can probably go to their shop and ask them what they do with their with the ones that they don't keep, the ones they throw away, they will save them for you, okay? And uh, you can also get those glass chips that way too. So voila, very cute. I see some debris right here on the edge. We're gonna get that out using my fingernail because you know, resin in your fingernails always works.